All right, so we have our dinosaur digging kit right here. This one is by 4M, and I got this one off of Amazon. So links will be in the description below if you wanna get your own. This is the Velociraptor one. I have gotten the T-Rex and the Triceratops one. Let me grab those. So here's the T-Rex one. And here is the Triceratops one. Now, I'm not sure if this one was from 4M, but I believe this one was. So hopefully, everything works correctly. So this one should definitely be good. So one thing that the kit does not come with, but I do recommend, is some goggles. Sometimes when you're chipping away at the dirt, the dirt can fly a little bit and not just, you know, dust. It could be some chunks. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on right now. And I guess it's not that necessary to put them on since I have not even opened the kit yet, but let's go ahead, go ahead and get into that. And this is going to be a time lapse. So right now you're going to hear me talking, but you're going to see me digging for quite a bit and there's going to be no audio. But let's open this up. So what it does come with is a digging tool and a brush. The brush is to brush away the dirt. Now I do have some of my own tools, so I'll be using some of those. But you can use the ones in the kits if you don't have your own set. And by our own set, what I mean is I've gotten some other ones from previous digs. I've had almost once a year I've always gotten the dig. So I have quite a few brushes and digging tools to use. This is upside down. Let's pull this out. Ooh, what is this? Okay. It's been a couple years since I've had one of these, so this should be quite fun. Nothing in the box here. And right here, if I can get the tape off, there we go. Ta-da! So this right here, I'm gonna move this stuff to the side. Oh, be sure to check inside the holes here because your tools are right here. So make sure you check in there. I'm gonna move this off to the side for now. So this right here is what we're gonna be digging at. I know it looks really small, but your dinosaur is in pieces. Afterwards, you're going to have to assemble it just like this one or any of the previous ones. Some of them are different, some of them might just be the head. I'm not just talking about 4M, I'm talking about in general. So just look at the information when you're doing that. But before we get into this, let's look at our information. So right here we have Velociraptor. I don't think this does anything. It's just to say, hey, you got the Velociraptor one. So we're gonna move this off to the side. And this is our instructions manual. I think, let's see. Dinosaur skeleton excavation kit. Oh, okay. Well, this, now this is in English right now. Where's the English side? Well, this part isn't in English, but it has many different languages, so that's good. So we're gonna set this off to the side as well. And right here, you can see all the different parts that we're gonna be finding in this small little block. And it's a little heavy. And I believe this does open up. There we go. All right, so these are the assembly, assembly instructions. It also has some fun facts as well. So you really just have to follow the pictures to see how to assemble it. You can kind of guess at it when you look at how the pieces may function with each other. And then in the back here, it says safety mes messages. I'm not gonna be here all day reading these safety messages, but definitely go over it. One thing I will say is the kit is intended for children ages eight or over, and make sure you keep the kit away from children that are under three years old. And of course it has some things that they recommend. It's the same things I recommend, so I'm just gonna say that. So not only do I recommend some goggles, but I also recommend whatever you're working on, cover it with some towels. Sometimes certain kits, not dinosaur kits, but experiments say cover with old newspapers. Well, 
like my family, we don't really have newspapers, so it's not really an option. But even if you do have newspapers, I find a towel, a towel is somewhat easier and better than newspaper. It's just your personal preference though. But definitely whatever you're working on, no matter what size experiment you're doing, always cover your workspace. I have a towel right here. It's not one of our you know, nice, soft and fluffy towels. It's one of our old towels that have been in this house as long as I've been alive. So I don't really care if it gets a lot of some dust on it, but it's fine. And it tells you some instructions here and some contents. So, but it's the same thing as I'm telling you. So this is not really like a how to dig with, you, you know, following the instructions. You're gonna learn based on what I'm saying. And right here, oh, we get a little, here we go. So here's some information as well. So not only was there fun facts on here, but there's also some facts on here as well. So that's awesome. And this is like a nice little image here. That could be fun for something. Not sure, maybe I should hang it somewhere. Or a profile picture, that could be funny. Anyway, so let's go ahead and open our tools. And if, if this is your first dig, I do recommend it your parent, parent or the guardian to supervise. It's not, there's nothing, there's no chemicals involved or anything, but it's still good to just have a, to have someone supervise. There we go. What is this? Oh, this is something new. All right, so. Right here, something was in the tools over here. I'll get the tools in a second. So it says, in case the hole in the skeleton is too big for assembly, so there are holes inside the skeleton so you can put the pieces together. So it says, if it's too big, then fill the joint space with small pieces of wax. So this is wax. I have not seen this before. It's, ooh, very stretchy. I don't wanna break it though. So we're gonna put it off to the side. Sometimes, I guess they make it individually so they can't get it right every time. But that's definitely new to me. All right. So here we have our tools. So the brush, like I said, is to kind of push away the dirt. And this right here you used to just kind of hit on the dirt usually. You can use this to kind of saw away at it. I do like using this side to saw away. It's not sharp at all. It's, it would not even cut a balloon at all. It doesn't cut me or anything. It's, it's not sharp. It's literally good for just kind of scraping away dirt. So it basically think of an upgrade from the brush. So it's not sharp at all. Parents do not worry. It literally could not cut anything whatsoever. And I'm not sure what this part is for, but this one, like I said, is for hitting the dirt. Now, some tools, what they have you use is you would get a hammer. I'm grabbing it from my desk up here. So you would get a wooden hammer and you would get kind of like a stake looking object and you would place it somewhere and you would just hit it basically and that's how it would work. So I am going to be using a combination of tools. While the wooden tools are nice, I do have one for my different kit that I like using a lot better, is this hammer right here. You can see it's a lot smaller and it's actually weighted somewhat. So I think it's definitely better for chipping away at the dirt. And I also like using these two. So here we have, you know, the stake looking thing. I'm not sure what this is called. I'll put it up on screen. But here we have one with a metal tip. So I feel that's also better for chipping away at dirt. We also have another metal one, but it's kind of thicker. And these are from different kits. So I don't buy these anywhere. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you could, but I just have these from different kits and I use them with other kits. So you can do that as well. If you don't, if this is your first one, then you can use whatever it comes with, which in my case are these. So I'll use a combination just to show you how it works. And I do have a particular brush I like using which is this one. It's kind of stiffer than the small brush right here. You can see it's a little different. So yeah, we have different tools that we're going to use. And I think we're just gonna go, go ahead and get into it. So I'm gonna do a time lapse. So I'm not gonna be, like I said, I'm not gonna be talking. There we go. You're just gonna see me dig away at this. Now, since this is plastic, you don't have to worry about breaking the bone. Usually with some of these excavation digs, you have to be cautious of not to hit, hit it too hard because you, you have no idea where the bones might be 
in this rock right here. You have no idea. So sometimes you might end up hitting the bone. Since this is plastic, like it's pure plastic, it bends and everything. So you don't have to worry so much and be really, really, really cautious of you know striking down and breaking a bone. Some of them you do have to be careful because you can break it. I actually had one where I did break it right in half or not down the middle, but it was in half basically. So usually you have to be careful. This one, you don't have to worry so much about it. So this is kind of nice to have your like your first one starting and not one where you could possibly break it. And we do have another layer here of uh, protection, not protection per se, that we're gonna get it open. Most of the stuff you don't need scissors, but if it's too hard, I do recommend using scissors. And this was wrapped quite a few times here. But hey, that's to keep it protected to make sure it doesn't break when they ship it to you. Especially if you're buying it from somewhere that's not local. For example, I know you can find some of the stuff at Barnes & Nobles, which is a nice place. I know it is a bookstore, but it actually does have some awesome science kits that I have had. I just didn't get it from Barnes & Nobles. And we have another layer here. Alright, so some parts are already breaking off a little bit because there is some dust in here. So do be careful. I'm going to go ahead before I open this, put my goggles on and move this piece of wax. And we're going to get started. And I'm going to show you just a little bit of how this works. I'm not going to start the time lapse immediately. Just so you can see what I'm saying and see how it works without it being super fast. It also recommends, which I do recommend too, is to have some old clothes on. Don't wear anything precious or any dress clothes. Something old, something you don't mind getting dirty with. So kind of like how you have clothes for painting and things like that. I also recommend if you have long hair, put your hair up because you don't want your hair to get in the way and you will probably get dirt in your hair. So be careful of that. Now there is this part right here, but we're going to dig that out. So you can take this and kind of hit it. Personally, even though this is good for your first one because it's plastic and everything, personally I don't see how hitting this end part, and I have another one, but I don't see how hitting this end part really breaks off anything. Yeah, you can see it kind of splattered over there and broke that off, but it's because it's loose. A lot of this isn't loose, it's really compact and everything. So you're better off using the other end. You can just kind of saw it off. So I'm, I'm kind of cutting into it. And your hands will get dirty, so do be aware of that. And you can see I'm making a really nice line here. And you just take your brush and just dust it away. Don't fling the dirt because it will fling. Just kind of push it away gently instead of just doing like wah -pah. See? Don't do it so hard as if you're stroking on a canvas. Since this does kind of look like a paintbrush, you're kind of more like just shoving the dirt away with it. But I do like using this big one because it gets more of it and is a little faster. There we go. You can kind of see this nice cut I have. I'm gonna clean the hole just a little, or this crack technically. And like I just use this part, so I can't really see how this part is all that useful. You really would just be hitting it for a while with not and not making a lot of progress. So, well, the models are nice. I don't really recommend the tools that come with this kit. But hey, you have to work with what you have to work with. I would probably end up using this side more than anything, just so I can saw through it. I'm gonna clean this again just so I can see what I'm doing better. And there's no real right way or wrong way of doing this. It's all about personal preference, really. You may want to just dig for a while and clean it off, you know, after 30 minutes or so. I like to kind of go back and forth between it. I also just like to dust off the block a little bit because there's already some dust sitting on top, so you can just kind of get that loose dirt off. And hey, I think I see our first bone. Can you see that little white part here? This little white part. This is on the bottom, so we're gonna flip this, and it's here. So, even though like I said, this is plastic, we're gonna be very careful with it. So first, I'm gonna show you how the wooden tools work. So you just place it here and hit it. 
which work really well. My first kit, I believe, did use this method, and it was really, really nice. There we go. So now you can see this bone a little better. And based on the indentations and how some things look, I think this may be the tail. I could be wrong, but it's kind of, it's fun to hypothesize, you know, hey, what does this look like? What part of the dinosaur is this? So like I said, the wooden tools are, they work really well. I just like using some of the other ones better. You probably don't need these heavy duty, tool, heavy duty tools. If you do have these from past kits, you don't really need them, I would say. Yes, they work a whole lot better, but it's also really powerful and dirt is kind of going everywhere. So just be aware of that. I would say, you know, use the hard hammer, but maybe a not as tough stake. But really it's up to you and your personal preference. Now what's awesome is I know this is a, an archaeological dig for dinosaur bones, but even just ones for gems or marine life, they're still really cool. And we're gonna clean it off right now. Where's the brush? Here it is. I definitely think this is a tail, but only one way to find out is to get it out. So now that you know a little bit about how this works, I'm gonna go ahead and start the time lapse. And you're just gonna see this whole thing come to life or really just come out the dirt.
All right, so the digging is done. And as you can see, I have all the pieces out of the dirt. And I'm not sure if you saw it earlier, but you can see I have a whole pile of just, I think it's clay actually, I'm not sure. I call it dirt, but I don't think it's actually dirt. Could be clay, not sure. Either way, I have a whole ton over here. Over here I have some sand bit because you can see where the bones were. That was kind of cool. But yeah, look at all this and look how red this towel is. It used to be like a like a cream-ish blue. It was very white, but had a hint of blue in it. Look how red it is. Looks like this was in a rock croy or something. Or maybe on Mars. Could you imagine dinosaurs on Mars? That'd be funny. Anyway, so yeah. Now you might have seen in the time, time lapse, I took the edge of this smaller brush that came with the kit and I would just poke it through the holes to, oh, there's still some in here. Poke it through the holes to get the clay out. So I do this every now and then. Sometimes your brush may get stuck, so be careful of that. An easier way to do it is just get a container and soak all the parts in some warm or hot water and let it sit in there because then it'll just dissolve. Uh, that You do need your parents or uh, legal guardians help though since the water can be hot. But yeah, you can see right now I'm trying to do the same thing and sometimes it works if the hole's big enough, other times it doesn't. And other times you can just take this and twirl the this end of the brush around and it can get some of that out or you can take the end of maybe your other tools from past kits. Obviously this won't work, the hole's too small, doesn't really work, but yeah. And I wanted to talk about this part because you might have seen where I took this and just kind of pushed the dirt out. The dirt, we're gonna call it clay instead of dirt because I'm pretty sure it's clay. So while it is not only just messy, it does stick together pretty well. So you can get the angle right, you can just push out the whole entire block or different pieces instead of just dirt at a time. And that works pretty well. Other times, like I just said, just soak them in some hot water. Even I have to soak them in hot water because there are some holes that are just too small. You could get a toothpick, but that is sharp. So you will need your parent or legal guardian's help with that. But the easiest way is just to soak them in a container, whether that be some cups or some tubes or whatever, just something to where you can put all the pieces in and let them soak. I'm not sure how long since it has been forever since I have done one of these. So you're just gonna have to take them out and see if all of the dirt is gone because once the dirt's gone, you can start taking your pieces right here and you can start assembling them. Like this arm should probably go in the rib cage here, but there's clay or dirt here, so I can't really push it in. So that's why you have to take it out. Take it out. Plus it'll just be a lot cleaner and you won't have some dust floating around or anything like that. And now you can see the tools are very dirty, so you can also put them in some hot water. But yeah, so I hope you all enjoyed this video in celebration of Black History Month. I certainly did, I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know if you found some other, whether it would be dinosaur digs or gem or fossil digs or marine digs, whatever it would be, let me know in the comments below. And if I think it's really good and it's pretty, not high, high quality, but you know, as long as it's not a knockoff brand and it's actually genuine, then I'll consider doing it. And it can be on my YouTube channel. And it maybe it'll be a theme, it just depends. But yeah, I really hope you all enjoyed this. Now I'm not ending it, I know it sounded like I was ending it, but I do want to definitely soak it in some water and then show you how it's assembled. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it'll be really fast for you all, but it might take me 30 minutes to an hour. So I'll see you all afterwards. And yeah, Cody, pause the video, my, my hands. <laughs> I can't pause the video. <laughs> All right, so the dinosaur pieces are clean. I soaked them in some hot water overnight and I did get some of it off, some of it was still on. So I took my brush or if you have a scrubbing tool you use to wash dishes with, then I just took it and brushed it off and you know, kind of scrubbed it a little bit to get things off. And especially make sure you have a really small tool, like a, I forgot what they're called, like a pipe cleaner or something and that you can put through the holes so you can clean them out so you can assemble your dinosaur. So now that they're clean, and don't mind this, this was one I was in between science experiments. So 
after I finished recording this one, I did a geode kit. And uh, I may have got some scruff marks on the desk. Yeah, but it's okay. This desk is very old and I got it purposely. Well, my dad gave it to me because it was his, but we got it purposely so I could do science experiments on it. So we knew it would get messy. Maybe we didn't expect dents, but still. And I've done a lot on this desk, so it owes me nothing. Anyway, so now that you have all your dinosaur pieces, and I'm just gonna move this, let's go ahead and assemble it. Now, usually what you want to do, and let me grab mine, you wanna grab your instructions right here. Now my camera doesn't autofocus, so it may look blurry on screen, but grab your instructions and it will tell you which pieces are numbered. So you're not gonna find a number on the piece, but just know like, hey, this piece right here, it's about to upside down. This piece is number three, this piece is number one, so just eyeball it and try to put it together. Now I've put together two or three of these, so I won't need my instructions because I know what I'm doing, but I will reference it in case I need help. But I will put it up here. Sorry, I just totally hit the camera. All right, so I'm gonna take this spine here, and let's just look, and I'm gonna put the tail together. You can see, not sure if you can see that, but these little holes here, and I'm going to line it up. I'm going to put together, okay? And just gonna kinda push it together. It won't snap, it just kind of goes in. I know that sounds weird, but it doesn't snap. you think it would snap, but it's not that kind of skeleton, so. And when you take it apart, you are, it's not gonna just snap off, like I said. You're just gonna have to like wiggle it off if you wanna take it apart. Because it's, it's like a soft plastic. It's not plastic, but I'm not sure what kind of material this technically would be. All right, so we've got that part on. I actually do want to assemble the skull at the moment. The top part is number one, and the bottom part is number two. That is because you can see there's little holes here. You kind of can, it's blurry again. And I got little holes here, and I have these. I'm going to have to bend the material to put it together. So I'm gonna try to do it in front of the camera. Like I said, my camera does not autofocus, so it's you're not really gonna see it. But I'm just gonna have to push it through. Sometimes things may not fit, sometimes they will. Each one's kind of different, not just the kits, but see, if you get a Velociraptor uh, dinosaur dig kit, mine may go on really easy when I assemble it, but yours may not. It may take a little more time. So just be careful of that, but yeah. That one went on pretty easy, you know, to be or not to be, do, 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 do. anyway, so, I know. <laughs> All right, so, I think we'll put the head on last. So we're gonna put the head over here, and let's see here. So looking at the instructions, I can see that these two holes here are for the rib cage. So I think this is the correct one. We're gonna put it on. You can always tell if it's wrong, when you put it on, it doesn't fit correctly or it just doesn't feel right, you'll know. And it does come out pretty easy, so don't worry about that. You can see there's a little red here. I try to brush it off, it does not come off. Yours may, mine may not. There we go, so that's on. I'm gonna flip this back around to match our instructions. And let's put on the legs. Well, the thigh bone, I think, maybe, not sure. And, Mm, we may want this one on first, or I have the wrong one. No, I do not. So you can see there's a hole here and a hole here. I'm trying to put it there, but it's not working. I'm... It's, huh. Mm, yeah, how are you supposed to do that? Let's try the other side. And I can tell it's not this piece because it's backwards. It's not supposed to be like that. So let's try this. Oh yeah, that does not work. So maybe I have the tail on wrong. Let's see. So I'm gonna take my tail off. I have to take the rib cage off. So you know how I said I didn't need the instructions earlier? <laughs> yeah. No, cause that definitely, technically that does line up. It should be, li oh wait. No, no, okay. And we'll try this side. Let's try to connect it beforehand, put the rib cage on second. 
You wouldn't think so since, I guess, I'm not sure if this is numbered in the order of how you assemble it, or if it's in the order of, you know, this is part number one, it's part number two, or if it is, you know, put this on first, put that on second. I'm not sure, we're gonna put these on. I'm not sure what these are called, so if you do know what this is called, please let me know. Okay, so those are on, but now will the rib cages go on? Mm, no, they will not. See, this is kind of the problem with some of these dinosaur dig kits, because even with, where are they, right here. Even with this, for example, you can kind of see it didn't fit all the way, especially here. It doesn't really fit because it's hitting the rib cage and stuff. So sometimes this stuff isn't really fitted well. Yeah, they look cool and that one does stand, but it doesn't always work. You also see the legs are crisscross and I tried fixing that. You can't because it's hooked to the rib cage. So that's kind of the problem with these kits. The digging part is fun, but sometimes the assembly can be a little questionable and you're just kind of wondering, how do I fix this? How do you do this? The only way I could recommend, I personally wouldn't because I feel like it would be messy, is you just glue it, but it's so small. I'm not really sure if that would be beneficial. And you can't rotate them either. They're stuck in there. So yeah, that's the best I can do. Because either I don't have these parts on, which I need for the legs, or the rib cages will be halfway off. So, okay, so that one kind of fits, kind of doesn't. Oh, I'm sorry, I got really close. I wasn't watching where it looks like on the camera. I was trying to hold it. Yeah, so the, so this part of the rib cage will not be connected. It'll just be spinning loosely. Um, this isn't really for playing, it's more for display. So that's why it's kind of okay. It's also kind of not, because you don't really expect that to happen. I can try bending the spine, which that kind of helped for this part. I keep going out of the camera. I'm standing behind the camera and trying to assemble it with my arms all out in front of me and stuff. So if I go too close, that's why. Okay, so that helped with that, but now the spine's bending into the other one, so that really doesn't help. So yeah, the spine's just kind of the rest on top. I really, th there's nothing I can really do. This part will not go into the hole based on where it is. It's it just won't. It just keeps hitting it. So we're just gonna attach it one. Like I said, you could use glue maybe, maybe a little tape. It is for display, it's not really for play. You could, it's not gonna uh, break per se, because it's not plastic, but it does bend. So it's pretty durable, but it, it's still not really meant for play, you know? Okay, so this leg, I keep going on camera, good grief. So this goes here, this goes here, okay, poor ribcage, and now we have the arms to put on, that's the wrong arm, I need this one. So the arm's going to be connected and you can take it off, so for example, yeah, the ribcage comes off, but then you can also just kind of wiggle, so wiggle and pull and twist and it comes out easy, I'll show you that again. So when you're trying to take it off, if for every reason you put it on backwards, or if you don't assemble it while looking at the instructions, or for whatever reason, just take the part you're holding in both hands, so rib cage in one hand, arm in one hand for with your other hand, for example, and you're going to want to, because it, it twists pretty easy, I can twist this whole thing around, and no problem. So you're going to want to like wiggle it and twist at the same time. So wiggle, twist, pull, wiggle, twist, pull, and it comes right out. It's not that hard. So I'll push that back in and I'm going to try to put this back on. <laughs> also, sometimes when you get these, the little pegs sometimes can be too big for the holes. I'm not sure how you would fix that aside from just trying to like push it in there with all your might. Oh, see the rib cage came off, came off over here because the spine's not supposed to be bent. So yeah, the rib cage will look weird, but what can you do? If it was metal or something like that, I don't think this would be much of a problem. Might be a little harder since it's metal, but if it was like snap on plastic. Oop. And there was a rib, rib cage and the arm. Rip. Okay, let's try this again. So I'm going to push that in. There we go. 
And the other problem with these, I know I'm saying, you know, this, this is a really cool kit and everything, but I'm still telling these problems. Well, I'm not biased in these. I want to have honest reviews and everything. And I'm telling you the pros and cons of the kit. That way, you know, going in, if you go buy this, you know, hey, it's not perfect. It has problems. You may experience this or that. So I'm telling you this so you don't get your hopes up too high and you know what you're dealing with beforehand. I mean, it would kind of be like me telling you about a product and then you get it and it has many different things that don't suit your needs and it breaks really easily, but I don't tell you that. And I'd rather not do that because that's really bad. Who, you know, people who might be, want to be uh, just, you know, get the money for the product or anything, they do that sometimes if they wanted to, not everyone, I'm just saying. Of course, I don't make any money off of this, I'm just giving you examples. My whole point is, point is that I'm telling you this so you know ahead of time what you're getting into. So yeah, that's the Raptor. As you can tell, this is Velociraptor and usually they stay on two feet, but that's not really gonna work. One, I can turn the legs, that's fine, and have it sit back. The problem I'm noticing is one, that's not how it works. Two, it doesn't, oh, it does stay on its own. Okay, I was wrong. I was gonna say it doesn't stay on its own. You would have to like twist the legs a little to get to work. Because for example, I had the leg like this and that's not really how it works. So the legs kind of balanced, that's kind of nice. The problem I was gonna say was the head doesn't tilt down. And raptor's heads, I mean, they could look up, but in regular mode, they don't. And I can't turn it down anymore, so. Your raptor is stuck looking up, but yeah. And I'm not sure if I could, let me see. So it's probably more like this. Yeah, it was before I had it kind of if it was looking up, but it's more like that, okay. So there we go, that's it, that is the assembly. And now you can display it anywhere. You can have it on a shelf, you could have it on your desk. It's not heavy at all. It doesn't take up too much room. Uh, I'm not sure how big, I'm not good at using measurements for referencing stuff. Cause I'm not sure what would be this size that a lot of people would have in their homes. But you know, I can't just say like a baseball uh, or a cord or anything. It's a lot bigger than that, but it's a really decent size. Let's see, my hand's pretty small. I would say, oh, you know, it's about the size of a seven and a half shoe but it's thinner than that so hopefully that helps maybe a little smaller than a seven and a half shoe maybe six <laughs> i tried but yeah i hope you did enjoy this video links will be in the description for the archaeological dig kit that i got and let me know if you have any other digs so the one from this company if you go look at the link below i have the triceratops and i couldn't find it before oh here it is and i have the t-rex which does not stand on its own it has to use its tail and you can't see that hang on so the Velociraptor, Triceratops, and this T-Rex, who needs to lean on the Triceratops. There we go. And let's see if I can move the camera just a little bit so you can see it better. Yeah. So if you have some from maybe the same company or something like that, make sure it's not the ones I already have since I've already done them. Granted, I mean, I guess you could. After all, I have not recorded them before. I've done them, but I haven't recorded them. So if you do recommend that, and I have enough people who want to say, hey, I want to see the Triceratops one or the T-Rex one, then maybe I'll talk to my mom and we'll see. And if I do end up getting the ones I've already had before, then I'll give away one of the ones I've done before. But I think they have one or two from the same company that these came from that I have not done. Just depends. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it. Go get yourself, if you can, a dinosaur dig kit. There are some at Barnes and Nobles. There's some at your educational store. Not sure what those would be since I haven't been one to one to one in ages. But or you can just get it off of Amazon. That works too. Oh, I think Hobby Lobby has some too. Yeah, Hobby Lobby has some. But yeah, go check those out. And they're really fun to do. They are messy, so please make sure you use a towel. You could use a newspaper, but I really recommend a towel. One of your old towels though, not your really nice towels. So your old towels. And it does make a little bit of noise, so be mindful of your neighbors and your parents and your siblings, your aunts, your grandparents, whoever's in the house, be mindful of them. 
since it does make a little bit of noise, not as much as the Geodes, which this video has come out. Not this video, the Geode video has come out before this one. So go watch that one. It is really loud. So please be careful where you do that. This one is not so bad with noise, but it still makes some noise. So please be careful of that. And yeah. And I do recommend wearing safety goggles as well. I know this was in the video when I was digging it, but I just want to say it again. I really want to make sure you're all safe. Definitely don't ha have your nice clothes on. Tie your hair up if you have long hair and wear your safety goggles. All right, so I will see you all later. And if you do end up doing a dig kit or any kind of science kit, please tweet me at Twitter. It is at Science Her Way. Most of it's Science Her Way. So show me pictures. Show me a small little clip of what you did. I want to see your creations and your experiments and your digs and all of it. So I will see you all next time. Oops. Oh, I was trying to grab it and do an outro. Why? All right. Bye.